quite unusual for a spoken word night to be tilted in favour of the female voice, I find. I don't know whether you would agree with me, but quite often there's quite a lot of male poets. But actually tonight we've only got two male poets. We're about to hear from our first one. And I've, I've nestled them in between female poets, like verses between two thoughts. <laughs> Uh, but I do feel for them, I do feel for them, and, and we are <laughs> we are in November, obviously, still, just about, so I thought to show solidarity. <laughs> I thought it accessorised nicer with the shoes as well. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Don't let me laugh, it will come off. <laughs> so our next poet, our next poet, was born in Syria. Uh, he studies history at Teesside University. And he claims to have so many lies in his life, he couldn't decide on one to tell me for this introduction. <laughs> which I think is slightly worrying. Uh, but never, nevertheless, that being said, his poetry is redolent with truth and power. Oh yeah, redolent. That's the word. <laughs> uh, so please, if you would, invite to the stage, welcome, give a big round of applause for Amir Dorish. Yay! Yay! I think this one is better. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, has anyone been to the Middle East before here? Yeah. You will be familiar with it tonight. I've got too many references for the Middle East. Uh, I thought about reading off the page, but then I thought uh, English is not my first language, and off the page, then you would think, God help us. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, most of the poems I write, they are with the current situation in Syria and the political situation. So they're not really as uh, maybe glamorous as you would have hoped. But also, <laughs> hopefully they will be all right. Let's start with the, this first one is called Syrian Billy Dancer. And uh, it's exactly how I see the international community now reacting to the situation in Syria. And, uh, with the president being Bashar al-Assad. Fountain of blood, ready. The stage is set for you. You appear, men clap, hips examined, re-examined, again and again. Billy dancing costume, not too revealing, they shout. You take off a layer, then another and another. Not yet nude, but will be soon. Up you jump, landing in the fountain of blood. Splash. You splash the men watching. Their tongues slide out, roaming over the faces, licking blood. Unreachable spots on the face, lickable by others next to them. They enjoyed it. Do it again. Do it again, they chant. Up you jump, landing more firmly, splash. Blood flew, reaching glasses, faces and food. Glasses licked, food eaten, faces licked, loud clapping. Jump, land, splash, jump, land, splash, jump, land, splash. No more blood left in the fountain. They're still asking for more. This one, I, I didn't really give it a name. I've been thinking about giving it a name, but uh, sometimes in the Middle East, they name the babies, well, they're not babies, children after four or five years, that was the habit before. Maybe one day it will be named. <laughs> Today I look at roses and ten, turn them into coal. The world is turning upside down where broken promises define human beings. 
make them shine like a hidden pearl thrown in the sea years ago. Its light is so pervasive that it puzzles the people of the earth. They are confused as to where the light is coming from. Shadow of memories chasing me constantly. Moments of madness mixed with a great composure. Everything is sinking like a ship that traveled around the oceans. While it goes down, the last child on it stands at its head and holds a damaged toy. A tsunami of thoughts attacking my body leaving it hopeless and helpless to what might come later. An earthquake struck, attempting to, de to demolish me and turn me into ashes. A hurricane came and carried my ashes to where civilizations still young. I formed an army of great armies over the years. Alexander the Great, Salah Dean, Stephen Chalmari, even Richard the Lionheart, all turned into soldiers under my command. Today, I spoke in the unspoken word. I don't love you anymore. I hate you. <laughs> By the way, the poems are, as I said, they're not towards anyone who directed anything, <coughs> just with the current political situation and in general what uh, uh, from life experiences basically uh, this poem has got a Billy Dancer in it again reference to, I, I like Billy Dancer <laughs> <laughs> only the Eastern man they like Billy Dancer <laughs> hard line on life taken like a Billy Dancer nail vanished doors colorful Wearing a costume made of colorless flags, eighth wonder of the world. Dreadful enemies, watchful, spiteful, <coughs> lustful. Breaking glasses, when broken, turning into million pieces. Optimistic effeminacy. Wounded lioness, rose with agony. Tocative clown, sheepish sometimes. Unnecessary inkling prepares to enter the room, be my guest, welcome home. Sky sinful with the starless, cloudless nights. Barefooted billy dancer stole my shoes. Shimmering eyes, protective over nothing. Benign drums move to the beat of her hips. Scars furnished, rather mosaic, like a piece of Persian rug. It grows fond of whoever steps on it. This is again... Uh, for, for some reason I thought, because it's been about two years now since the, the, the trouble in the Middle East started, well in Syria in particular, but uh, there's, there has always been a talk about starting something, an action from the United Nations, but nothing is starting. Uh, so I, I started to imagine statues be becoming angry with the situation now. Because the human, they are not really taking action. <laughs> so this is statues. Veinless, bloodless, eyes glued eastwards, knee half bent, Ready for the first step. Billy button deep swallows barbarism. Hips curvy. Mouth silently loud. Earless hearing. Long haired voyage. Lineless palms. Steady foot. An olive nose. Saint of liberty. A breath is in. Exhales. Sending a breeze across Syrian beach, beaches. Fetching human fragments across the globe. Aimful, humanaz, humanizing statues. A great choice, says the Statue of Liberty. 
No better nation can destatue us today. Bring me the bravery of the Arab knights. Plant in me Arab literature. Let it branches flower in my body. Or those, the sunflower leaves that can blue some roses. Pomegranates from Aleppo that sends stars to the sky when they are crushed. Lay before me lemon that strikes gas into the tearful eyeball when squeezed. Kill no time. Congregate stones of ancient civilizations. Those who only speak the statue language. Mother Russia. Christ the Redeemer and David, proliferate our race, Florence awaiting. Today is the day to declare our superiority. Long live the progeny of statue. Uh, I don't know how I did with time, but this is my, the last part, I think. Um, table. Sits in the middle of passionate creatures, firm, assured of its destiny, with four legs planted in the earth, carrying a body that evokes bottles and glasses, in which you see reflected glances. A table, a proudly optimistic of its achievements. It gathers around it those who love, hate, despise, and acknowledge. It memorizes their analysis to, reflect, to reflects on its own. It turns enemies into friends and friends into lovers. It speaks every time a glass touches its sensitive skin. It sinks into deep sorrow when people leave. It connects telepathically with those who drop their act before leaving. It falls in love with those who put their masks away on arrival. It's fearful of the promises made on it, armless, headless, with the heart of stone, it shouts when calumny appears. Go away! A table suffers in silence with a wild greed. It's a brain filled with anecdotes recalling the thousand days and nights of Shahrayar and Shahrazad. With the gardens of Babylon giving way to a scent of an Arabian olive trees to enter the nostrils and cleanse the blood. 